what's really very ironic for me is that when we talk about environmental racism, just because it's been imposed upon people that are very much marginalized, then it becomes a okay to ponder those questions. So hopefully, as we go into the depth of, of pondering them, it will somehow motivate all of us to demand justice, not just for the Aboriginal, but for all the marginalized people in the world. So all of my life, all I have known is bottled water. Um, you could do a quick Google search with just two words, um, Bulletic and water, and you come across all of these articles. Um, I would visit my friends off reserve and think twice or ask if I can drink their water. Some of them would often look at me and wonder why the water wouldn't be good to drink. I never really had an answer for them other than, well, I can't drink the water at home. When I talk about these issues in our community, such as boil orders, drinking water, dump sites, construction, welfare, our sacred minigu, climate adaption, rise in water, protection of species at risk, most of the peoples in power ignore me. Working towards climate justice at every angle is extremely frustrating as a youth of any race. And when you're Indigenous, it is even more frustrating when your own communities do not listen to you or what you have to say or think that you might have valuable input and action items to bring to the table. They consider us loud, emotional, uncontrollable, demanding, and are frustrated with us. Our value to most leaders and the older generation is forgotten, which is funny to me because they're the ones that raised us. I believe uh, all of us pretty well have, an, have some idea of what constitutes environmental racism. How did, how did we get to this point? in which we now have to label something like environmental racism. And what part have we played into that? We are so interconnected, interdependent. We have to come to this crazy notion that we, the, the two-legged or the humans, don't have to do anything. That science will somehow save us. Maybe science does not have all the answers. In our understanding, science is only a tool. Love and compassion. It's an overarching objective. And with that comes, of course, appreciation. But for some reason, we have allowed that technology to really compromise the very essence of life. Now, if science is a wonderful tool, and it is, there's no question about it, when are we going to put it to work in the right way? But we should not allow this energy to be our God. It is not our God. Use that tool to help mother nature. That is easier said than done. We, we need clean air. We need clean drinking water. And we need fertile soil. And without those, what chance do we have of surviving? And for me, it's very simple. There is no separation between the government and the multinationals or the, or the, or the industries. That time is now in which action has to be taken. That action has to be on a spirit of of, of collaboration and the spirit of co-learning, learning from from all of us, because we are very much part and parcel of this wonderful creation. You know, our responsibility extends for seven generations. The more we embrace this collectivity, I think the better chance we will have of surviving. The four colors of people are all understood to, be, to reside mm -hmm. on Mother Earth. The black, the red, the yellow and white, skin people. Each group has a unique gift to bring to everyone else. And therefore, unique responsibilities as well. The oldest groups are the people of black race, of black color. Their unique gift has to do with the power of sound. Physical landscape must be sung into existence. It is their obligation to study, preserve, and use wisely the power of science, the power of sound in the universe. The next oldest are the people of red color, the Aboriginal people of the Americas. Their special gifts involves understanding the complex relationship between the four orders of creation and all salient things that exist within them. Their greatest responsibility 
that involves preserving the health of Mother Earth, her, her lifeblood, the water, and, and the plants, animals, and human realms. The people of yellow color are understood to be younger still, and their special gifts and responsibilities have to do with understanding the work of the human mind and body. The fourth group of, of our white brothers are sisters, white. Their special gifts currently, the largest in North America, has to do with bringing about effective communication understanding between all of the peoples of Mother Earth. Because if we could not communicate with one another, how can we exchange? those gifts with one another. So this to me tells me that whoever, whatever color that you may come from, you do have a special and unique gift. And with that special unique gift, you also have a responsibility. And the onus is on all of us to share and to bring those gifts to the table. It was each and every one of us a much better opportunity of meeting the challenges in the future.